it's uncompromising, addictive and often unforgiving with an adrenaline rush like no other. There is no practice, no second chances. It's the ultimate motorsport competition on gravel. It is Rally and this is the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship coming to you from Gippsland in Victoria. Final round of the national series, the decider. Scott Petter leads from Brendan Reeves, but after his crash in the pre-event power stage, the balance might just be swinging back to Reeves. On the menu today, we'll feature the fight between the Rally School Mazda 2 and the Walkinshaw Performance Renault Clio. We'll highlight the final of the Junior Rally Challenge. It's come down to two young men in two very different cars. Tom Ryan in a rear drive Toyota Altezza up against Guy Tyler in the front wheel drive Renault Clio. And of course, we'll highlight the Australian side by side challenge. One last battle for the season between Polaris and Can Am. We begin today with a recap of the East Coast Bull Bars ARC. Scott Petter still leads Brendan Reeves after near disaster for the championship leader in the Armour All Power stage. Team Citroen occupy third and fourth, but Mick Patton's chances of retaining fifth in the championship took a setback as the Repco Polo was withdrawn after a second pre-event crash, this time in testing. Scott Petter's mistake in the power stage was a setback for himself and Dale Moskett, but he remains upbeat. Put it behind you and, uh, you know, it's, it's at the five points, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to affect much. We were having a great run and the power stage and I made the fatal mistake of uh, getting ahead of myself and saying to myself, just get through, get through, because we had a good start to that stage um, and took my mind off it for one little bit and ran, ran wide. For Brendan Reeves and Rhiannon Gelsomino, it's one step at a time. First, the power stage, then heat one, and heat two. And we've ticked one box, now we've got this afternoon four stages to concentrate on. The stages look very dry compared to last year. Uh, really hard on the Kumo tyres. We're running the hard, uh, but I think it's still going to be very hard on them and, and we'll see a lot of tyre wear and probably some front to rearing of tyres as well from the crews. Uh, that's our plan at the moment and we'll see how that works. While the Citroens will fight for the spoils of third and fourth, there is another element that could change the complexion of this weekend. The reigning Australian rally champion Eli Evans has returned for his home event with regular co-driver Glenn Weston in the repowered and revamped Honda Type R Civic that they campaigned 20 seasons ago. There is only one thing on their minds. I'm here to win. Um, I might be a nuisance to the other guys and, uh, well, this makes it interesting for the championship as well, so, but I want to get a win for the Type R, so we'll see how we go. Brendan Reeves must win both heats if he's to have any chance of winning his first championship. So having the registered Evans in play this weekend could help. I'm happy Eli is here uh, because there's an opportunity there that he could bridge a gap between myself and Petter, but who knows, he might win the rally as well in the end. So we'll just keep pushing on, judge it like a normal rally, uh, every stage by stage, and just see what we can do at the end of heat one. If he can beat Evans into second, that would further diminish the points of offer for Scott and close the gap. It's a numbers game, and Steve McKenzie adds well into the equation. He and his younger brother Brent were unable to start the final of the Armour Power Stage through suspension failure, but the Optico Ford Fiesta showed great form, easily qualifying, and they too are registered and could be the ticket for Reeves. Scott Petter has never won a championship, but his co-driver has, and no doubt Dale Moskett, has every possible scenario covered this weekend to ensure a win. Ross Dunkerton and Dean Herridge have also been looking at just how things could pan out. Petter might be more concerned than he's letting on. Final round of the championship, Ross Dunkerton, and what an armor all power stage. <laughs> I've just spoken to Scott Petter and he is devastated. Big moment for him. Looks like he could get away. We've got to fix it for the first heat. Brennan Reza, he capitalised. He certainly did. But you've got to remember, in this event, we see the return of the current Australian rally champion, Eli Evans. So, oh, he's a local and he could be a real party spoiler, couldn't he? He certainly could. These roads here in Rally Victoria, what are they like? <laughs> 
Every year I've come here, I've had the waterproof gear, the, the big galoshes on. Yes. This time, dry and dusty. And I think this is the first time that the Australian Rally Championship has run on dusty, dirty roads in Victoria. It could be. It's a bit overcast though. We could still get a little bit of that rain, so there's plenty to think about, and it is going to build up to be a great finale for us. This is going to be one great event. And that event begins right after the break. <laughs> Watching the final round of the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship being held in Gippsland, Victoria. Go into seven left, 30. Medium five right. The classics have swept the roads of loose gravel, but the first championship car on the road discovers not nearly well enough. Just late, all right in. The early scare hardly slows Scott Pedder. He and Dale Moskett cover the 18-kilometre opening Pioneer stage in 11 minutes and 58 seconds. Uh, a lot slipperier than we than I thought. Um, a lot more gravel on the road than uh, and anticipated. I suppose the classic guys are probably saying the same thing. Very slippery, and uh, you know, but car was good. Made a few first two corners, the half spins just, just so slippery. So, uh, but hey, better than this morning. His armour all power stage gaff still clearly on his mind, but not affecting his driving performance. Eli Evans is next, hot on his heels. The reigning champion keen to show he and the repowered Honda have what it takes to win. Three in, then right four. Titans one late in. Drive sharp. Oh, really? Yep. 30, uh, almost to the end, only 3k to go. Like, I think we made the right tyre choice in there, but we've broken a drive shaft, so we're out pretty much there. That's not the news Brendan Reeves was hoping for. The rally school Mazda 2 just three seconds off Pedder's pace, Reeves very aware of the road surface. Um, I could see the other guys where they'd been making mistakes, and look, I was making the same mistakes in a lot of spots. But yeah, that's a shame Eli's out, because that sort of throws our hopes, unless Scott makes a mistake. Hopefully these guys behind can keep pushing. Turbo boost pressure problems hamper Steve McKenzie in the Optico Fiesta. The engine should be reading one bar, but as the dash indicates, it regularly drops to 0.2. Still, the brothers return third fastest time and have no problem with the road surface. Yeah, the roads are excellent. Um, the car sits sitting on the road awesome at the moment. Just having a bit of trouble with boost pressure. I'm not sure what's happening, but. It's dropping down to point two of a bar, then I pick a gear and it comes to live again. So I'm not sure what the, the go there is. I think it's just a tune, something with the tune. To short left six, 30. Both Citroens have been displaced by the Fiesta. No. Sullen's the quicker of the two, despite having never competed in this event. I, I was fairly conservative through there. I didn't really want to push too hard. I thought I had a flat for a while and it's very taily in a few spots. Short four and off left and hug three right loop tightens. I feel weird. His teammate has other issues. And that's it, mate. Oh, I can't concentrate. I'm spaced out. I don't know. I feel weird. I couldn't concentrate. I got a real spacey and weird sensation. 100. Is it worth shutting it down out of this 100? Try and turn it off and power it back up and see if it yeah. fixes it. The opening stage in the Junior Challenge isn't good for Guy Tyler. We did all right. Um, we seemed to go into limp mode for like 500 metres. We switched it off, switched it back on again, it was fine. Um, just warming up, you know, mate. Um, yeah, had a few close moments, but nothing too bad, so see how we do. Nine left, eight right and eight left narrows. He does hold off Tom Ryan though. The road yeah, surface clearly right, in favour of the left. front wheel drive. Keep it on the road, keep it on the road. And care pressed, nine left. Just really slippery in there. Yeah. If you ever come offline half a wheel width, it just steps out sideways, especially in braking stuff down here. So, Fro here was a little bit nervous, so you're going to have to watch out for that stuff. A bit nervous there, Fro? Just a little bit. Just a little bit caught me off guard when we are uh, sliding a little bit more than I thought. Winning heat one is paramount for both Pedder and Reeves, but tyre issues affect everyone, 
and just how that's managed might be the difference between winning and losing. The Walkinshaw Renault pushes on through guns only 14 kilometres, but the tyres are being punished. Switch immediate three plus right. With engine power and steering all going through the front wheels, those tyres suffer more wear than the rears. There's little time between stages, but Reeves and Gelsomino managed to swap rears to front in a bid to give themselves better grip. Short 40, eight left short into six right. It works, six seconds up on Petter, and with that, the Heat lead at the halfway point. Tomorrow, there's nothing if we don't win today, so that's why we wanted to put the big effort in today, especially with Eli out. Uh, we're hoping Eli would be really fast. Mackenzie's fast, that's really good. Uh, he's not quite up there, but Scott could still have a problem where anything can happen. It's a long rally, and they're fast, tricky stages. A clean run with no boost issues for the McKenzie brothers through the second stage. Once they get started. Just 0.4 of a second behind Petter, even with the stall, shows the potential of this up and coming rally team. I'm stoked with the times um, and there's heaps of room for improvement in there. We're having a, having a bit of an issue with the turbo there. It's uh, not creating boost at certain points, I'm not sure why. So I think Scotty's there, going to be downloading some data and sending it off to MoTeC right now. Hopefully they'll have a look at it and see what it's doing. Coppin bounces back through SS2. Nothing dizzy about him or the drive this stage. Just a three second lead over Sullins. Got time back off Tony, so back in the third, which is good, because Eli stopped in there, but I didn't see him, so I'm not sure what's going on there, but um, like that felt really good in that last one. The car was dancing from corner to corner, which is always a good thing. Not a good thing for Tom Ryan. Straight 150. It's a diff. It's a diff, mate. Yeah. With $5,000 on offer for the junior title, say nothing for free registration for the 2015 season, oh, yeah. a free entry to Rally Australia, yeah. 20 Kumo tyres, and a handful of other worthy prizes, Tom Ryan is going to have to hope Guy Tyler has problems. Right now he isn't, and the young South Australian is eyeing off the prize. At the pointy end, Scott Penner is eyeing off the main prize, and strategy is becoming even more critical. We're going to take um, uh, a change of tyres for after the next one um, because we think that if we can win the heat, then that takes a hell of a lot of pressure off us for tomorrow. Uh, Brendo's already shown his cards and he's, he's, he's front to back, so he's, he's four tyres down now. Um, so we'll see how we go with that. Just 16 Kumos are allowed for the rally this weekend. And already some teams are on track to use eight in heat one that represents just one third of the rally. For our race leader, things are still on track. We're just putting it all into today, you know, keep ourselves up there, keep the pressure on Scotty. Welcome back to Rally Victoria. You're watching the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. The second half of Heat 1 is a repeat of the two opening stages, only this time the roads have been swept in the loose gravel. The hard surface below might be causing excessive tyre wear, but it also delivers better grip. Dean Herridge explains. You'll often hear our Australian Championship drivers talk about being on the swept line or out in the loose and even road position being very important. What does it actually mean? I've come down to the special stage here that will be used in Rally Victoria to give you a great example. We've got a left hand corner here, I've got my tyres that I've borrowed from Scott Petter for five minutes and you can see here, inside of the corner, swept line. So much gravel's already gone, we've got some of the rubber already being picked up and taken off the tyres. So this left front is going through the real rigours of trying to give the guys good grip, maintain its compound and give the car a good feel through the corners. On the outside, loose stuff. Out in the loose, the guys would say I was out in the loose and couldn't get any traction. So now our tyre's not dealing with that on this side, it's trying to bite in through with the tread depth and give our guys a bite and maintain speed and not lose too much time. So of course we've got to have adaptable tyres to suit this, compounds that the drivers will choose from, and of course if you throw the rain in, it's got to cope with mud as well. Clear skies, so no problem with muddy roads today, but the tyre wear issues are extreme. 10 right, 80, 7 left, neat at clearing. 100.
10 right, 100. Turn three left, after mound. As Scott Petter said, winning this heat would be important in psychological terms. He knows this is a winning time. Finish 100. They won't be in there. Tip, six left. Okay, 36. 22 quicker, mate. Second and okay. K. Good job. If Brendo's beaten that, then uh, he's done a really good job. Brendo can't. A distraction mid-stage causes him to slow. It's a suspected flat, but he makes the finish with all Kumos intact. There's no chance to swap tyres front to back this time, so they're forced into the final stage of the day using badly worn tyres. Won't have time now. They're not as bad as last time, because I was up chaining earlier and then took it a bit easier the last part of the stage. Because we didn't know what was wrong, we thought it must have been a puncher. Yep. Because there was a hell of a noise coming from the rear, yep. but it was that sway bar link jamming in the wheel. With the broken sway bar removed, Reeves now has a seven second deficit to claw back the heat win. Selecting gears early seems to help Steve McKenzie's issue with dropping turbo boost. He's still 12 seconds behind the stage leader, but he is third in stage and ahead of the Citroens. Subtle suspension changes to Tony Sullen's car rewards him with fifth, sixth clear of Adrian Coppin. The right loop yards that we may be 70. Unbelievably, his crew has somehow fitted mismatched profile tyres to the DS3, and it's terrible to drive. He and Tim Batten change one to correct the problem for the final stage, but it won't be enough to beat his teammate in the first heat. Then right nine can tight and short four in line. Eli Evans rejoins with a replacement drive shaft, but in an effort to bank tyres for an assault on the final heat, he and Glenn Weston are using the same Kumos from the first pass. Yeah, I can feel it. Made for some interesting braking down the hill. Evans withdraws to consolidate his tyres for heat two. Today's battle is over. There's nothing more to be gained. Eight left on brow. Opens. 50. Everything to be gained for Petter, though. He and Moskett are at one with the Renault and can smell a heat victory. Short five right. Narrow. 50. Short nine left, entry, seven right in, 80. Flat right into short seven left, camber, 50. Over 13 kilometres, the pair is 23 seconds quicker than their last pass. Reeves is on the road and yet to finish. It's another significant moment in the championship for Pedder and Moskett. Yes. The psychological advantage is theirs. Further back, the young guns in the Fiesta are learning the art of driving with fading tyre tread. Two Corollas join the mix this round from within the state. Ashley James driving a car he won a national two-wheel drive championship with more than a decade ago. Graham Redcliffe in a more standard powered version of the popular Toyota. Neither can match the times of the current spec two wheel drives, but watch this space for their moves next season. Both Corollas have been running behind another Victorian, Alan Rowe, in the Daco Focus. Rowe and Steve Glennie collect fifth in stage and the heat thanks to the Honda's withdrawal and the sideline Fiesta. Sullins leads Coppen in the Citroen race for minor placings, but with just one heat remaining, Scott Petter extends his lead over Brendan Reeves in the championship. On paper, only a DNF will see Petter miss his first national title. It's happened before, though, at this very rally, when two flat tyres change the championship outcome at the very last stage. Still one final day of competition left in the East Coast Bull Bars ARC. All that action will unfold shortly, but coming up, Australian side-by-side -side challenge. Back to the East Coast Bull Bars ARC. While the outcome of the national championship was still to be decided, the Australian side-by-side -side challenge was in the bag for Polaris. 
The superiority of the red machine in 2014 was evident from the start with the introduction of their Razor 1000. As Michael Guest alluded to last round, things are set to change with Can-Am introducing their turbo-powered machine next season. It will be game on. And then 40 becomes 4. Interestingly, coming into this round, Nathan Shivers was ahead of the factory Can-Am driver and eager to consolidate his second position overall. But Ian Hughes was an early upset. Hughes and the Eagle Power Sports Polaris upstaged everyone, including category leader Cody Crocker, winning the opening battle over the 22km Pioneer stage by two seconds. Crocker hit back next stage, though, through guns. Four in front to retake the rally lead. Michael Guest was the quickest of the Can-Am drivers, but had to settle for third through most of the Heat 1 stages. He's driving really well, and look, they, they've got a really good package at the moment. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, I think the pressure between him and Cody is, you know, you can see they're really fighting, and, and uh, at the moment it's, uh, it's going to be a big effort from us just to stay in front of Ian, really, today. By SS4, Guest had the measure of Hughes beating the Polaris pilot by one second. But Guesty and Dave Green were forced to settle for third for the heat on a day when tyre wear was a hot topic. And it's the most tyre wear I've seen in, in the side-by-sides ever here. It's just to do with the abrasive roads, super dry conditions. And uh, yeah, well, we're actually seeing some tyre wear, which is good from, from our um, perspective, because generally in the side-by-sides they're pretty easy on everything, including tyres, and it's, uh, it's good to see them wearing. If they're wearing, they're working. Straight 50, seven left short, 50. Eight left entry, four right. Nathan Shivers was doing his best to stay with the leaders in his Can-Am Maverick, but smaller wheels were hindering his chances. Yeah, I've got the, just the 12-inch wheels and I've got um, yeah, 25-inch tyres. I think he's got 14-inch wheels with 28s. So, yeah, mine's a little bit better out of the start and a little bit better on the tight stuff, but I'm, I'm losing the top speed um, quite a bit on all, on all the straights. So. I think we got a pretty flat on the right side. Four left, 14. A flat for Shivers Jr. in the opening stage of Heat 2 left the door open for Father Les running a similar machine. He and Peter Harris grabbing the family spoils when and wherever possible. All left here. 100. Brow. Six left mid. Crocker held on for the stage win through SS6 by just one second over Guest. But a moment mid-stage could have changed all that. Right. Tire wear, a new experience for the side-by-sides. We're here in the ARC field certainly struggling with tyres, and, and we are too. We've, we haven't actually had this much tyre wear on, the, on our tyres, so they're not wearing right out, but they're getting quite low and then very, very slippery. So we're um, punishing the brakes, punishing the tyres, and, uh, but, you know, it's pretty fast. We're going pretty quick in some, some stages. We're um, up there with some of the ARC cars, so we're pretty happy with that. While Crocker is not competing with the main ARC, his history as a top-level rally competitor makes it difficult for him not to be watching their times. Crocker's third side-by-side -side challenge title in a row comes on the back of four APRC championships and before that, three Australian Rally Championship titles. Competition is in his blood. Crocker expected competition from Michael Guest. That was the nature of establishing the two-make series with two top-level drivers. But now, some of the competition is coming from within his own can. It's <laughs> the last time we invite Ian to come along to a rally, isn't it? He's, uh, but he's been flying, you know, even last year, he got second in the, in the series. And uh, he's winning stages here as well, so he's, he's, he's right under it. And uh, yeah, full credit to him, he's doing a fantastic job there to, to hold Guesty off. And that was part of our plan too, was if we needed to get some points and, and put Guesty at bay, we would put someone in between us, that'd be really nice. And he's, he's done more than that even, so he's, he's, it's going really well. Yeah, I've done a couple of good stages. Yeah. Um, it's very, out of all the rallies I've done, this has been the hardest on the car. You know, sort of tyres, every two stages are gone and brake pads. Are, a few stages where the brake pedal's actually gone to the floor over the finish line. and So it's, I can't believe how hard it actually is on them. So, but yeah, no, there's a bit of a battle going on. I really am, this event, trying to trust my pace notes. So really pushing it on blind corners and trusting what my pace notes say, and so far it's been working. With a background in off-road racing, the added dimension of pace notes has a real appeal to Hughes. I still love rally a lot more than the off-road. I'm going to get shot for saying that, but yeah, it's a lot better. <laughs> Putting his money where his mouth is, Hughes and David Piper win both runs over the Bunyip reverse stage. 
but Michael Guest had enough time up his sleeve to hold off the late charge. Can-Am second for heat two, but second equal with Hughes for the weekend. Cody Crocker made it 10 consecutive competition wins in rally in as many years in three categories, a formidable feat by any stretch. The final heat of the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship is set to go right after the break. the last heat of the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. A championship that's come down to this last heat. Scott Petter is about to embark on what is arguably the most important day of rallying in his career. I think yesterday was probably more important for us because it's set up today, you know, we, um, we had a decision to make halfway through yesterday whether we can serve and, and probably put some more pressure on ourselves today or, you know, more close enough and we thought, well, taking a few extra tyres, um, we can win this day to day and, and, and put a lot of icing on the cake. I'm privileged to actually have a chance to still win today. We've come down to the last heat and the last round, so that's pretty great that someone hasn't wrapped it up already, so it's a good opportunity to have. 130 k's today, so we're really playing with tyre strategy now. No one knows what to do. We've really only got eight new tyres and two that are average that have been on the rear yesterday. The big talk though this morning is tyres and it's at the forefront of both drivers' minds. Uh, look, the Kumos are doing a great job but you know the roads and conditions are, are, are fortress. You know, you've got uphill hairpins on very dry, rocky, bony sort of surface so any tyre is going to struggle in those conditions. We've got 24 k's now and then the 13 k stage. <laughs> Yesterday I did 18 k's and 13 and my tyres had canvas. So I've got more k's this morning than yesterday. So who knows what's going to happen, it is a lot cooler now than it was yesterday. But the stage looks very abrasive, this 24k stage. So it's going to be anyone's race, we'll see what happens. Eli's got plenty of tyres, I think he's laughing at all of us. We should have the advantage, but um, you know, I keep saying it, Brendan and Scott are going really fast and I've got a bit of work to do yet and I'll try and get this tie bar right and hopefully we can win some stages today and maybe get the heat win. Now it's been a long time since I've seen the amount of tyre wear and it's all due to the dry, rough, hard road conditions. Some leading crews have already used half of their allocation and they've got two thirds of the rally to go. Some are contemplating whether or not to go up and above their allocation and take a time penalty. But with rain forecast in the dying hours of this event, their game plans could change. Evans and Weston begin well, fastest of the favourites, but only by just 0.3 of a second over Pedder. Ironically, in the Citroen camp, there's conflicting opinions about tyres. Uh, unfortunately, we uh, absolutely toasted two tyres yesterday afternoon. Um, tried to manage it in the first one, but they were just trash sort of three quarters of the way through. I don't know, I never wear tyres out. I've never done it all my life. I don't know whether I just don't drive fast enough or what the story is, but uh, yeah, I only used four tyres yesterday, effectively. The two tyres on the back now are the the ones we ran all day, um, so I've got enough to put two on every time we put a jack under it pretty much, so we'll be right. I'm left four and a half. Against the odds, and even his own admission, Sullins is driving faster than he right has four, all right. season. And on roads, he's right never four, competed right. on before. He is fourth over the 24k stage, and 11 seconds Short, in front of his left. teammate. All the stars hey, master the line today for Reeves and Gelsomino, but they aren't. And that, despite Petter finishing third in stage in a bid to preserve tyres. Brake keep, keep five left medium. A jammed rock damages the rim and forces a wheel change. The game of rally is getting tough for the siblings. Former ARC contender and local Glenn Raymond did start yesterday in the bright RX-7, but gearbox issues sidelined him early. Now back in the hunt for heat two, he is on the road, two minutes behind Brendo. But his dust will create havoc for the crew, chasing down the last glimmer of title hope. Reeves is not the only one affected by dust. With his teammate making him work for third in the championship, Adrian Coppen is slowed by the rally school Mazda's dust. Six left, danger tricky, five left, Titans over crest. The true potential of young Steve McKenzie might not have materialised in heat one, but he and Brent come out of the blocks to make their mark today. 
SS5 Benny's up goes to the Opticoat Fiesta by 3.6 seconds. Right hand line over crest, fast left seven. Through SS6 New Turkey, the Honda hits back though, beating the new kids on the street by 0.7. Opens very long. Sullins continues his good form too, pushing hard on medium Kumos to be third quickest over the 13 Ks and two in front of Reeves, who is simply trying to stay in the game. It's a game that's been made easier for Scott Pedder by preserving tyres. Uh, everybody else, I think, uh, went front to back, but we need to save some tyres this afternoon, particularly if it starts to rain. So. We, uh, we didn't change them and uh, we, we would have lost plenty of time in that last one just cruising down the hills. So uh, first one was surprising. We, we really were eat gentle but uh, only 0.3 behind Eli. So, you know, we, we're going all right. With fresh Kumos for New Turkey though, Evans is a stage winner. Yeah, we were nearly eight seconds faster. So new tyres in the front, guaranteed. <laughs> but only just faster than Steve McKenzie not only won his first ARC stage, but is now leading his first ARC heat. Yeah, first stage win. Uh, that's really good to get under our belt. I didn't think I was doing anything special through that stage. I think Scott's backed off a bit. Um, but we were just being nice and easy on the tyres, hitting the apex and just keeping it clean. Unfortunately, Alan Rowe wasn't keeping things clean through SS6. The Daco Focus sporting more than a few car park scratches. I sure have, mate. Yeah, it was... Uh, Bit of good, good luck more than good management, I think, to get out of it. That's for sure. What happened? Ah, uh, just into a like a five right or fairly tight. Anyone it braked and it was gravel right across the road. Not used to it. Not on a no grip and just couldn't pull it up. Yeah, wheel alignment's still good. Wheels are still okay. pointing. It should. It felt like it would have ripped a rear wheel off that that hit that hard. But anyway. Tom Ryan put guy Tyler on notice that the junior challenge was not going unchallenged. With a replacement diff in the Alteza, Ryan was chasing down the Renault that was languishing with gremlins in the electrics. Young Ryan's biggest challenge might have been the handbrake in the co-driver's seat. Fro Horriban less than enthusiastic about overtaking the slow competitor. Oh, back on the road. All right, pick on him. Uh, Kings 150. The quickest junior finishes the first morning stages ahead of Tony Moore in the R1 Fiesta. And another Victorian, Graham Redcliffe, who stepped up from the state competition for the final round of the national series. Yeah, that's right. So we're not going to win the event, but uh, we're definitely out there having as much fun as we can. And that includes this moment in SS6 he forgot to mention. Ashley James is taking things a step further next year. His old championship winning Corolla from 1999 is being used to get himself ready for the 2015 ARC championship season. We've got a Volkswagen Polo V2 car and uh, actually some of the setup changes we've made on the Toyota, we, we made those changes with an eye on where we're going with the Volkswagen and uh, I'm really looking forward to actually having a steer of that car now. It's going to be awesome. It was awesome for Steve McKenzie after the morning break, with Reeves struggling for handling and, like Pedder, conserving his tyres. The Optico pilot powers the Fiesta through Bunyip Reverse, half a second a kilometre faster than Eli Evans in the Honda. If there were no issues for the tank former's Honda through seven, then the same couldn't be said for SS8. I don't know. I'm going to pull over. Pull over. Let's check it, see if we've got anything in it. Eli's last chance to win a heat in 2014 the... right. evaporated with the water from a leaking engine head gasket. A fourth stage win for the McKenzie brothers, this time with Brendan Reeves nine seconds behind and struggling with tyres. The stage that we did um, after the last service was really, really loose and more of a granite sand surface. And then the last one was as well, but we had to take it easier on the first one to make sure the tyres got through the second. And then we come back with quite a good amount of grip, so like, oh, we should have pushed harder on the first stage, you know, but anyway, you win some, you lose some. Adrian Coppen finally beats Tony Sullins in a stage. He and Tim Batten count themselves lucky after taking a stick through the radiator. And we pulled up and I pulled it out. Um, luckily for us, it didn't actually start leaking coolant, so... I was a bit concerned at a few times there, but I kept checking the temp gauge on the dash, and we're quite lucky with our cars because they start flashing red when things get hot, and they start shutting the computer systems down, lots of stuff, but uh, nothing started flashing, so we just kept pressing on. With a one-minute advantage over his teammate, Tony Sullins is playing the conservative card, not 
totally confident of his pace notes. The last stage, for instance, the car, I don't know, but maybe had the wrong tyres on, should have had hards, had mediums instead, and just not really confident in the notes. Time show, we got beaten. He can't catch Scott Pitter, who's balancing the preservation of his tyres against a rally win. Now in second place this heat, behind Steve McKenzie. I'm, I'm pretty comfortable doing the pace I'm doing at the moment. Um, like just hitting apexes, getting good traction, and yeah, I'm surprised we're out in front. Yeah. Yeah, you know, full credit to McKenzie. They're driving that car very, very well. You know, like it's uh, obviously more tyres, but uh, you know, I know how fast I'm going, and and he's doing a very, very good job. So uh, we just need to stay in second, and and uh, you know, championships uh, very, very close. And that championship will be played out right after the break. Scott Pitter comes out firing for the repeat stages that will end the heat, rally and the championship in the East Coast Bull Bars ARC for 2014. What a difference four new Kumos make. Brendan Reeves is second, 2.9 behind, keeping the pressure on. Both championship contenders in front of Steve McKenzie, the man chasing his first ARC heat win. Mackenzie is bumped back to fourth in stage through the repeat of New Turkey. Tony Sullen's gaining confidence in the Citroen and his notes. The short left four and a half hug into short right five left four and a half plus. Reeves and Pedder are in a race of their own. This stage belongs to the Mazda, but by just 0.7. No problems for Alan Rowe through the repeat run. The Daco focus consolidating an otherwise good weekend, lifting to fifth in heat. With just two forest stages remaining, there is no time for Scott Pettit to relax. With Brendan Reeves breathing down his neck, he can't take his eye off the ball. We've actually had a few minor, minor, minor moments where the car's just gone off the, off the line uh, those last couple of stages, so I need to get back and concentrate and just make sure that we drive racing lines again. It's been a huge year for Brendan Reeves, who, after a stellar start to the season, has plenty to be proud of, considering the difference in age and experience of his adversary. For us, it's been a big challenge, actually. We started the year off really well, but we were still having issues. Um, we won the second round as well, but bit by default, Scott had problems, he was winning, and then he won the next couple. Uh, Coffs, we had awesome pace, winning the first stage for six seconds, and then the camshaft broke, so the year that could have been, but it still ain't over yet, we've got three stages, and I'm loving it's coming down to a wire, I'd just like to be in Scott's boots, not my own. <laughs> And last year was very much a learning year for the car and for us and first the first year in a front wheel drive car and we've uh, got the car right. Wong Chong Dai's done a fantastic job getting the car right and, and Dale and I are in sync now and everything's just pretty easy now. For McDalton this is an almost surreal final service of the year. He's been watching Scott Pedder chase his dream for two decades. I'm really sort of, yeah, I'm a bit on edge to tell you the truth. I just... Um, I want him to do it really badly. So how long have you been part of that Peters team? A fair while, yeah. Um, well, when the two boys had the escorts yeah. and basically all the way through, um, most, of the, most years with them, yes. So it's been a fair while. That's the last time he's heading out in this championship. Yeah, yeah he come back a champion. Scott Petter gives away four seconds to Steve McKenzie for the heat win. His focus firmly on the big prize. Stage 11, Bunyip Reverse, is a win for Brendan Reeves, as is the final forest stage to Rago Reverse. Amazingly, after 18 kilometres, the man who has chased the championship title all year, only to fall short at the 11th hour, dead heats with another young man who has just revealed his hand as a future ARC champion. Seven seconds shy of this pair is the Walkinshaw performance Renault Clio. Aboard, Scott Penner and Dale Moskett, close to claiming the 2014 title. Back at Lardner Park, it's almost a formality. SS13 is a repeat of the Armour power stage. Nothing short of disaster will change the outcome. It's an exciting moment in front of family and friends. What a stressful event. 
Um, yeah, it has been a long time coming. You know, a lot of thanks to a lot of people, which too too many to mention, but uh, over a long career. And uh, but the Walking Tour guys have done a fantastic job this this year, and Dale's awesome. And uh, yeah, just it's been a great weekend for us. It didn't start well, but you know we uh, we managed to tie things really well, and you know we won the rally as well, which is just cherry on top. A rally win for Scott Petter, but the final heat goes to Steve McKenzie. Tony Sullins a well-deserved third in heat ahead of teammate Adrian Coppen, with Brendan Reeves rounding out the fastest five for the day. Tom Ryan collects the bounty for the Junior Challenge, winning $5,000 cash, 20 Kumo tyres and plenty of incentives to enter for next season. Kumo's Spirit of the Rally Award goes to none other than Stuart Bowes for his excellence in photography over the last two decades. This, his 150th ARC event. Not quite that many for Scott Pitter, who grabs the biggest bag of points this weekend ahead of a well-deserved Tony Sullins. Brendan Reeves is third for the final round of the championship here in Victoria, ahead of Adrian Coppen and Alan Rowe. 44 points, the final margin between Pedder and Reeves for the title. And despite a last-minute lunge from an always improving Tony Sullins, Adrian Coppen holds on for third in the championship with Alan Rowe fifth. The accolades, though, must go to a man who's had two dreams. One, an Australian Rally Championship that for so many years has eluded him. The other, guiding and nurturing the very championship he's just conquered. Like the roads of the rally this weekend, both dreams have been tough to travel, full of obstacles requiring the utmost determination and grit. A deserving champion. That's it for the 2014 season. We hope you've enjoyed the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. Join us again in 2015. The flag drops for another year of competition in the sport that is uncompromising, addictive and often unforgiving. We hope you can join us then. In the meantime, as always, for more information, head to the website rally.com.au. I'm Greg Rust. Bye for now. Today's coverage is made possible by Kumo Tire, Pedder Suspension, Armour, Co Tire, Can Am, Polaris, High Tech Oils, and our supporting partner, East Coast Bull Bars, world's best alloy bull bars.